Good morning from sunny California. Hello, hello. So today we are in Dry Creek Valley and we're going to have a tasting at Amista Wine. There's always something to celebrate, That's right? That's what I think. We just finished our uh, set of Barolo Nights all over California, so there might be something to celebrate. Welcome! Thank you. Cheers! Thank you so Where are we, first of all? In uh, the Dry Creek Valley, mm -hmm. which is in the heart of Sonoma County. And that's Northern California. And we're just a few miles out of the most charming town, I don't know if you've visited, Healdsburg. Oh, yes. Amisa means making friends okay. in Spanish. It actually means it makes friends. And the reason we picked that name is because our journey into wine has been all about our friends. Cheering us on, drinking wine with us, okay. helping us purchase this property. Which is gorgeous. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> Was your journey in wine? <laughs> oh well, first of all I'll tell you it wasn't planned. It okay. just kind of evolved and it started when we lived in Silicon Valley south of here. We were both working in high tech but we had this steep hillside that we didn't know what to do with. So my husband saw this little ad in the newspaper and it said backyard vineyards mm -hmm. and we thought we like wine Why not? <laughs> Why not, right let's grow grapes so he planted 130 Cabernet Sauvignon vines and then about six months later he thought well if I'm gonna grow grapes I gotta learn how to make wine so he bought a half a ton of Cabernet grapes from someone else uh, which I thought was outrageous mm -hmm. and made wine in our garage and that's when it first started. That's Good. when he got the bug. And from there, everything just kept evolving. That's great. Salute. 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 Absolutely. What made you fall in love with uh, Dry Creek Valley? Well, it happened a long time ago. Um, before my husband and I were even married, we came from Colorado, which is where we ah, grew up. Okay. And to California. And we decided to take a trip to Napa because we loved wine. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, well, you should also go over to the Sonoma side and visit Sonoma. And that's when we first fell in love. <laughs> we visited Healdsburg. We absolutely loved it. That was many decades ago. Let's talk a little bit more about farming and sustainability. I'm introducing Brian, uh, yes. estate director here at Amista and good friend. We used to work together at Gary Farrell. Where are we? And uh, this looks pretty cool. Yeah, so we're actually right between our estate vineyard, Morning Song Vineyard right here, okay. which we farm organically. And the, what's called Dry Creek, which actually isn't dry. Uh, <laughs> it's a wet creek. It is very wet creek. It yeah. actually runs all year round. Um, but I think what's really cool is that because we're farming organically, we're not putting any waste into the environment. Uh -huh. Dry Creek is actually a really well-known uh, steelhead and salmon hatchery. Oh, wow. So you have coho, um, salmon, and steelhead that comes up Dry Creek, and there's a hatchery outside of the dam. So something that was really great that we did was we actually restored the creek behind our property here. That creates all these little nooks and crannies in the river, or the oh, creek, wow. to where the salmon and steelhead can spawn. What do you think is the future of uh, this area with you know wildfire, climate change and everything? I wish I had a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the future is. Um, I do know three things that I've learned about all of this. The first one is since you can't predict the future, I think the most important thing to do is do the right thing. Okay. Do the right thing in the way you farm, do the right thing in the way you 
lead your people, do the right thing in the way you make wine and in the way you run your business. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like um, we never could have predicted a pandemic, right? Right. Yeah. But if you have a healthy body, you exercise, you eat well, oh, that's good so shape, true. Right? So true. Then you're going to have the best chance of surviving whatever Mother Nature throws at yeah. you. So I, that's number that's one. What we always say yeah. yeah yeah that's a great point yeah number two I think it is good and we've learned that you have to kind of think about scenarios now if we're going to be shut down how are we going to handle it mm -hmm. if we're going to have a fire how will we evacuate mm -hmm. so you can plan to some extent and then the third thing I've learned is that we are so resilient mm -hmm. not just us but everyone in Sonoma County and every single thing that's happened to us in our journey it every challenge has led to an opportunity that turned out something better. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the other thing is just know you're going to get through it and find ways to seize the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And also from a consumer perspective, um, and I'm talking also to the people that are watching the video, try to be as responsible as you can. So when you're buying your wine, pick wineries that are doing something about it. So. Uh, I, I guess I would say just, you know, make sure you, you're drinking good stuff. <laughs> I <agree with> that. <laughs> cheers. Hey, yeah, cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs>finally get to the place. The guy is very welcoming. This this was where? It was outside of Alba. Somewhere. Somewhere in the Lange. And so he, he pulls out this humongous truffle. <laughs> he can't speak English, we can't speak Italian. And he's showing us this truffle and we're thinking, oh we're gonna have that with dinner? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. That's how we roll. <laughs> oh no, he didn't give us any. He no. was just bragging that he oh, wanted this he truffle. He wanted to sell it to you. Maybe. Possibly. Uh, Maybe. So we had to wait till morning and have truffles on our eggs <laughs> at some nice. restaurant, but yeah. We had a, a pretty good amount of truffle last night. I did did you? more truffle on my risotto than there was risotto. Oh my <laughs> god. So what's uh, interesting about the farming here and you know the whole viticulture aspect? Yeah. Dry Creek is, is really famous for Zinfandel, but I, I think something mm -hmm. that makes us really unique is that we're, we're farming our own varietals um, on the valley floor. You know, so we're right now we're in our uh, Movedra block. Okay. Um, something that is, I like to point out, and it's a perfect timing because we just did some work in the vineyard, but mm -hmm. look at all this river stone. And so Rhone, the region, oh, yeah. is famous for having really rocky soil with a lot of river stone, and we're mm -hmm. literally a stone's throw from the creek over here. Absolutely, creek. yeah. So, Roan varietals just kind of came to us as like, hey, let's let's try something uh -huh. different on the yeah. valley floor, and they thrive and they do wonderful. And then especially, so you you growing the trifecta? Yeah, yeah. Syrah, Mouvedre, yeah. yeah, okay. Yep, and um, it's just been a lot of fun just seeing how it works. You know, we we've been around for twenty some odd years, so it's uh it's neat to see everything growing and changing, and that's fun. it's great. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Yep. What are we drinking? Grenache Syrah Mauvedra Sparkling mm. from the estate. Sounds good. Yeah. What inspired you to make <laughs> bubbles? Because it's not that usual. Oh, it, it would be for me because I love bubbles. Okay. So that was how it started. All right. Uh, but actually it was one of many accidents or challenges that we faced that we and it turned into an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So what started was Mike, my husband, was um, out in the vineyard one night supervising the pick of Syrah. And we were doing it with machine just to see how it did. And at midnight, he's so excited. Go down this row, come down this row, go down that <laughs> row. He picked way too much Syrah. And when it got into the tank, it was 10 tons of grapes in a 10 ton fermenter. Except that when they started fermenting, they were gonna bubble all over the floor. So he had about 120 gallons moved to barrels uh -huh. and with the idea of putting it back with the regular Syrah once everything was fermented. But when we tasted it, it was delicious and it was a rosé of Syrah. Hmm. So we had that for a few years and then one day our winemaker who is, uh, was teaching a class at the junior college asked if he could have some of that rosé of Syrah to make a sparkling wine. He wanted to teach his class how to do that. We said, great, do it hmm. if we can taste some. So when we tasted it we said we got to make that for ourselves and that's how it happened 
That's so how cool. it started. Mm. So, uh, want to take a taste? Yeah. yeah. Salute. 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 Thank you for it coming. It was great. It's a beautiful place. Brian, nice seeing you again. Good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> and make sure you let them know uh, where they can find your website, if you're on Instagram or anything. Yeah, it's uh, pretty easy. It's uh, amistavineyards.com. Okay. Um, and same on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. All right. Salute. 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 Cheers.